Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that you're here and happy almost Valentine's Day, by the way. Also, Galentine's Day, one of my favorite holidays. So much fun. I hope you have had a good week. Happy Friday and welcome to the final video. Welcome to the final video in our series about Let's talk about sex, physical boundaries, and Christian dating. This has been a long series. It's been longer than I ever expected it to be. <laughs> it is, it has been 10 videos long, and now this is our bonus video called 23 Non-Religious Reasons to Save Sex for Marriage. So I have been wanting to make a video like this for a long time. I'll be honest, I saw Emily Wilson, another awesome Christian YouTuber who I just love, she made a video called 30 Non-Religious Reasons to Save Sex for Marriage, and that video rocked my world, and I was like, everyone needs to see this, and I just, there were a lot of things I hadn't thought about on that list, and things I had thought about, and I was like, I want to make my own list, like I have my personal reasons and convictions around waiting to have sex, oh, around waiting to have sex until I'm married but I just really think it's wise practice for literally everyone. And so I was like, let me come up with my own list from what I think and what like my friends and family think about this topic. And so I texted a lot of people this morning, family members, friends, people who are single, engaged, married. I just like, ugh, I'm blown away because they had really great reasons to wait and reasons that, you know, confirmed what I was thinking and new reasons too. And so I made a list of 23 reasons to save sex for marriage. I want to start off by giving several prefaces or disclaimers to this video. Please know that if you have, you know, messed up sexually in any way, you're not alone. So have I. So have so many people that you might not realize. Um, this is not a video, you know, condemning anyone or, you know, bringing up judgment or shame or any of that. I do not stand with those things. Second would be, I actually ended up making this list solely non-religious reasons to save sex for marriage because no one really talks about these. Um, we hear a lot of, you know, rhetoric in the Christian world about reasons to wait to have sex until you're married. And I feel like I've touched on the Christian reasons to save sex for marriage um, in some of my other Let's Talk About Sex videos. If you want a more detailed like explanation of God's design for sex and why he created it for the covenant of marriage and more of the like religious perspective, let me know and I'm happy to um, give a more detailed video about that. But this is really just a video that can apply to everyone, whether or not you are a Christian. Another disclaimer that I think is really, really important is this video is not talking about individuals who are survivors of sexual assault and sexual harassment. My heart goes out to you. That is not my story. Feel free to, you know, skip over this video if it's triggering in any way. Before I forget, please subscribe to my channel, like this video if you enjoy it, um, and comment so I can say hi. Please feel free to comment your thoughts on the video, anything you would add to my list. I'm happy to just have a discussion in the comments. So see you there. Okay. So, first one is practice in delaying gratification because when you wait to have sex until you're married, you are practicing saying no to something that you want in the here and now and delaying that for the future. You're doing that with sex and you're also practicing doing that with other things in marriage. Second would be, I think the most important, when you have sex with someone or engage in any form of sexual activity, you release oxytocin, especially at orgasm. There is a great amount of oxytocin. It's the love hormone that bonds us to people. It's the hormone that's released when a mom breastfeeds her newborn baby. It's also the hormone that's released upon orgasm. And so when we orgasm with multiple people, we essentially are creating an emotional, like chemical bond with them. And so going off of the oxytocin point, when we save sex for marriage, we're not creating attachments to multiple people. We are creating that attachment just to one person that we are bonded to in marriage. Fourth reason is when you wait, there's no risk of getting pregnant when you are intending to. You have the safety and security of marriage when you're having sex with that one person that you are committing your life to, to say, okay, we're ready to have a kid and there's no chance of unintended preg pregnancy. No form of birth control is 100% effective. I know people who have been on birth control, like on birth control pills and got pregnant. 
yeah, it's nothing's 100% effective except for abstinence. <laughs> okay, fifth reason to save sex. Big time reduced risk of sexually transmitted diseases. We don't like STDs. Great little bonus point of saving sex. Number six, when you delay gratification and save sex for marriage, you have the time to build other really, really important parts of your relationship with someone. You're building a friendship, you're building your emotional relationship and your spiritual relationship with this person before you ever introduce sex into the mix, which is awesome. Number seven, this is so important. It's taboo, but it's important. When you don't have sex before you're married, you can really, like, it's a really good way to make sure that the guy is there for the right reasons and that he's not just dating you for your body. It's a way to see if he's just lusting after you versus really loving you and sacrificing for you. Number eight. I really, really stand by this because I've experienced this personally. The more physical you are with a guy, the harder the breakup is. I know you don't want me to say that, you know, you might break up with this person that you're dating and being sexually intimate with, but you might and it hurts. And even if you haven't had intercourse, it's still really tough when those breakups happen. If you, you know, cross your boundaries physically, it makes it a lot harder because there is bonding that happens in the physical elements of relationships. So something to keep in mind. Let's see, what are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number nine, sex outside of marriage makes relationships messy. It clouds your judgment, it clouds your emotions, it just gets in the way of getting to know someone for who they are as a person aside from the physical. Number 10, when you save sex for marriage and if you are one of the lucky people who, you know, you're a virgin when you get married and your spouse is also a virgin, like y'all are, that's awesome, that's goals, right? Um, there's no comparing to other people because when you're having sex with your spouse, there's no like, oh, remember what so-and-so did sexually this many years ago? Like, I like what they did better. There's none of that because this is your first time with that person and it's beautiful. Number 11, so this is specifically addressing hookup culture. When you are waiting to have sex in the covenant of marriage, there's no worrying if the guy's gonna be around in the morning because in the hookup culture that we live in, it's, you know, one night stands and just sleeping with random people or people we barely know. And, you know, probably just leaving the next morning and never talking to them again, or, you know, having a very short lived relationship. And that's just not how our bodies and brains were designed to engage in that sort of intimate activity. And so when we save sex for marriage, we know that the person's gonna be there. Like, they're not gonna leave you in the morning. Like, if you've truly committed your life to this person, that is so safe and secure. And okay, <laughs> can you tell I'm like super awkward? I literally have been talking about this for 10 videos and I'm still like, oh, sex. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. When you have sex in the safety of marriage, there is no guilt or shame. Now, a lot of people will go into marriage with these purity culture narratives that they still haven't really worked through thinking that, you know, sex is bad and dirty and that might bring guilt and shame into marriage because of those narratives that you believed for a long time. But I'm talking about just like the act itself. When you're doing it in, doing it, <laughs> when you're having sex in the safety and covenant of marriage, there is supposed to be no guilt or shame because that's the exact context it was designed for. Next one. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but having sex in the covenant of marriage allows you to be so clear-minded because you've already gotten to know this person and build a friendship, emotional, spiritual connection, and you decided to commit your life to them before even having sex with them. And so you have made decisions, made the most important decision of your life without the confusing emotions and hormones of sex. Next would be saving sex and intentionally waiting to have sex until you're married allows for some really good character building to happen in that waiting period. It teaches you to be patient. It teaches you to honor the person that you're dating and to honor yourself and to honor God. And it really teaches you self-control because it's hard. It is very difficult. Like I've talked about in my other videos, these are wonderful fruits of the Holy Spirit. If you're a Christian, virtues, good things. Next, let's see. There's no sneaking around or hiding when you're having 
sex in the covenant of marriage, premarital sex, extramarital sex, there's always that sense of the guilt and shame and, oh, I have to hide this because it's bad or wrong, like, especially if you've grown up in a religious environment where you know that's not right. It, it just, it brings that sense of like bad boy, bad girl excitement, but there's none of that in marriage because it's good and pure and holy and wonderful and exciting and exactly how it's supposed to be. Number 17, when you save sex for marriage with the person that you're going to marry and you guys haven't had sex before, you get to build that part of your relationship together. Just the two of you, you started your new married lives and you're like, I am committed to this person for the rest of my life. We get the rest of our lives to figure out sex together. We get the rest of our lives to figure out what the other person likes, what they don't like, you know, how to have a healthy, good sex life. And that's such a beautiful, like wonderful gift. It takes the pressure off because you're like, this is my person for the rest of my life. Like I don't have to impress them because I don't know things. Like we get to figure it out together. A lot of people make the argument, well, why not just wait to have sex until you're engaged? Why marriage? What's the difference? You're still committing to that person. First of all, engagements can get broken off. People don't like to talk about it, but it happens, unfortunately. When you're engaged, yes, you're committing. Yes, they've, you know, the guy's gotten on one knee and asked you to marry him and you've said, yes, I love you so much. That's beautiful and great, but that's a symbol of the commitment for marriage. It's not the actual commitment. No vows have happened. You are not getting up at an altar with your future spouse in front of your family, your friends, and God, and vowing to be with them until death do us part for the rest of your life. Engagement is just a season. It's a transition and preparation for marriage, but it is not marriage, and that's really important. Next, kind of going off of that, by saving sex for marriage specifically, you are having a distinct dividing point between pre-married, before married, engaged, in relationship, whatever, and marriage. You are saying like, this is something that is distinctly for marriage and it marks a transition from this phase of life to another phase. And that's just really special. Next, this is like 19. When you are introducing sex before marriage, you figure out how to manage conflict without relying on the physical. You figure out, okay, if we're not having sex, we can't just go do it to like get through this problem. You get to work on communication and problem solving and just basic conflict management skills without relying on sex. When you have sex with someone, you are naked. <laughs> Obviously, you're not this but I mean, beyond just physically naked, you're emotionally naked, spiritually naked. You are so vulnerable, literally at your most vulnerable you possibly could be. And in that nakedness and vulnerability, marriage is this beautiful, sweet, safe, sacred place to hold that vulnerability. Next would be, what's our next one? Next would be, Discipline, we love the word discipline, right? No. But really, waiting to have sex until you're married helps you build discipline because it's gonna take a lot of discipline not to sleep with the person that you're in love with. So, character building, character building, character building. Number 22, when you save sex for marriage, there's no worrying if he's gonna like your body and reject it when you're naked, right? That's a very real insecurity, especially for women, I feel like. Because when you build your whole relationship not based on sex and you wait to have that in marriage, you again are building that friendship and that emotional and spiritual bond and committing before you've even had sex with this person. They've obviously seen your body, like, you know, you wear clothes, you go to the beach, all the things, but they have chosen you, chosen you and committed to you. And they're not gonna run away when they see you naked. Like, that's gonna be a good, exciting thing, I hope. And so you don't have that like body insecurity and like feeling like you're, you know, they just want you for your body and you need to change your body to get them to want you and maybe they'll break up with you because they don't like the way you look. Like that's not how marriage works. And last but not least, it is just special. It is very sweet and very special to save something so beautiful and intimate for marriage. I'm really excited to have sex for the first time in marriage. The dogs agree. <laughs>
I am really excited and I know I'm gonna make myself watch this video in the next relationship I'm in because it's gonna be difficult. So I hope that you save this and come back to it whenever you need it. And know that I am right there with you because it is difficult to wait, but it's gonna be worth it. All right, bye guys.